Welcome back. A record year for Wisconsin's cruise industry as Great Lakes Cruises expands in popularity. A new report shows last year Milwaukee's port welcomed more than 13,000 cruise passengers. That includes an increasing number of international passengers traveling here to Wisconsin. More cruise ships are going to arrive soon at Milwaukee's port, including at the new South Shore Cruise Dock funding that included three and a half million dollars from a state capital tourism grant. The port's new director has a busy year ahead with growing and critical statewide impact, I met Jackie Carter at the lakefront. Speaking of the cruising industry, 2022 saw 13,000 passengers, eight vessels, 16,000 uh, tons of luggage. What does that actually equate to when you talk about uh, the business that, that comes through the port? So the numbers are how we measure what we do. But when you think about what that means for the city of Milwaukee, you're talking about the number of people who come and see what we have to offer as a city. We're talking about people who are supporting local businesses. So there's hotel stays, there's restaurant uh, visits, there's small businesses that are being supported. And so coming off that record year in 2022, you're anticipating what for 2023? We're, we're anticipating similar numbers. Um, what we're really excited about is that there's going to be a second. So the, the ships that come and visit Milwaukee vary in size. We're talking from uh, being able to carry about 125 passengers up to about 378. And so we're going to see an addition of another larger vessel. So that means there's going to be more passengers that are potentially going to see Milwaukee. And then what do you attribute to that 2022 record setting year? For one, there's a new market. So they're building bigger vessels. Viking has now built ships that are specific for Great Lakes cruising. And so they're the biggest vessels that can come into the seaway. And now we, we're going to see two of those. And from what I understand, there's other companies that are gearing up to take part in that business because there's that people are attracted to that. They want to see something new. They want to have a, a unique experience. And the Great Lakes has a lot to offer in that space. Is this something that's sustainable in the future, do you think? Oh, absolutely. And why? It is. And I think because the Great Lakes has so many different things that they offer. The feedback that we've gotten from the passengers is that they, they love the experience. They love the different things that they're able to enjoy. You get some of the regional favorites. I mean, the, there's beer here that, you know, people get to experience all the different breweries that we have to offer. People never had cheese curds. They can experience that in Milwaukee. And you mentioned Viking Cruises. What are these other cruises that are happening here and who's actually coming into Milwaukee? Who are on these ships? They're, so these are international cruise passengers who are coming from all over the world. Um, and it depends. Some of them have uh, longer itineraries that they're on. So I believe Viking has uh, an itinerary that extends a couple of months. So they are, they're traveling. They, they have multiple stops. And then there's some shorter ones that are in starting in Canada and come down through the Great Lakes. I wanted to talk a little bit about the port's uh, new ag export facility. What's the update on that? When, it, when can we expect that to open? We're hoping that, that we're going to have that operational next month. Um, and, and we look like that's that's going to happen. Um, we're wrapping up the final construction, so the, the permitting, of course, is a lot of the last minute, making sure everything is in place and working the way it's supposed to. The state predicts a $63 million impact uh, from this export facility opening. That's a pretty significant number. How does that translate? Well, that means that the farmers and producers and growers in the state and in the region have a an avenue to get their products to market. So they can bring those products down to Port Milwaukee and ship them out. And we expect that we're going to have products that will be going over into Europe, some products going into Africa. So those are the markets that we're, we're looking at. And I know one of the, the things that we had recently, there was a grain terminal at Milwaukee Harbor that closed. And so that makes the DeLong project that much more significant to this region because they'll be able to, to fill that service gap that now exists because we've lost that grain terminal. Looking big picture at the port operations, where are we today than where we were maybe three years ago, you know, when the pandemic was just getting in full force? We're working on development to make sure that we can sustain a lot of the new business that we've uh, we've been able to attain. We are also working with our tenants and our partners to see if there's opportunities to diversify. We've seen a lot of development in the city. Port Milwaukee can have a hand in that. So one example, there's the timber tower that uh, was constructed downtown. That lumber came through the port. And so we're looking at ways to build on those kinds of opportunities to help the, the folks who do business in the city to understand how the port can help them to facilitate what they do and be a support in that space. Great conversation there on the lakefront. That ag export facility expected to open next month. All right, up next, an iconic move.